What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today we're starting on the green truck. Now, I know in the last video you guys saw me take uh, this motor down or at least the last video on the green truck you guys saw me take the motor down and uh, it is still sitting here I'm waiting on those parts that we took off I took to my machine shop to have cleaned up and uh, but anyway we need to move on to getting some stuff off the green truck so today the goal is to get the transmission out so we're gonna do obviously we've gone from this is a 4.3 with an automatic we're gonna go to a 5.3 with an automatic and uh, the trans needs to come out first and the reason I'm doing it that way is because when you take the motor and trans out as one unit, and hopefully we don't have to do that. I've had really bad luck with getting the torque converter bolts loose. I'm hoping we don't have that issue today. But if you take the motor and trans out as one unit, you have to take the hood off. And I would rather not take the hood off if I don't have to. Um, so we're going to take it out, the transmission out, and uh, that's the goal for today anyway. So the very first thing we need to do, as you can see, it is up off the ground. I've got it on my wheel stands that I've made. And I know a lot of people you ask about these. These are just two by fours cut 16 inches long and glued and screwed together. Now you can make them as high or as low as you want to, um, but nice project and it's very, very sturdy. I love these things. You guys have seen me use them in several videos and it's something that you can make. But the very first thing we need to do is, actually I think I already popped the hood, but the battery is still hooked up. We need to undo the battery. And uh, so I will grab an eight millimeter undo the battery here and then we will slide under this thing and we will talk about all the things that we need to take loose. So now that we're under here, as you can see I got my light down here, we're going to start by, I think the very first thing we're going to take off is these little brackets. Now whether these are needed or not, I'm not sure. GM kind of went away from these brackets down the road, but I'm going to go ahead and take those out. They look like they're 13 millimeter. Uh, take both the front and the back out and then we're going to take the drive shaft out so the drive shaft you guys saw me take out in the um, video where I did the rear end and I probably should have just left it out but 11 millimeters it's going to be pretty close back there in the back once you take that out you will have to use like a pry bar to pry it forward to push it into the transmission like back here in the tail shaft and um, you push it forward pull it out and uh, I'm going to put something underneath to let it drain in while we loosen up these other bolts. So that's the first step I'm gonna take. Uh, the next step is probably loosening up all the electronics that you see here. And I'll get a light up here so you guys can see a little better as I do that. So these are the four 11 millimeters that you need to take out to get the cap off. And then you will put a pry bar, something to pry this out and uh, you'll push it forward and then we'll be able to pull this thing completely out of the transmission. So the other thing guys is when you do that, you're gonna get quite a bit of leaking around that tail shaft. So make sure you have something to catch it. I'm gonna put something down um, in order to catch that fluid. Now that we have the drive shaft loose, I'm gonna go ahead and start unplugging all the electronics back here in the back. So we have um, the rear O2 sensor, we have the speed sensor here on the back of the transmission. And then um, I think we'll probably have another O2 sensor probably somewhere here up close. Yeah, and then you have the main. Oh, you guys can't see anything here. Let's see if I can shine my light up here. And then you'll have the connections right above your shift indicator. And those are generally glued in. So as you guys notice, I struggled with that the last time. But once we get those out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the cross member, which should be... I think they're 21 or 22 millimeter. I'll get back to you here in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and undo all these electronics back here. Now that I have everything unplugged in the back, I didn't go to the front and unplug anything up there. We're going to go ahead and take out the 15 millimeter that holds the um, trans mount right here. So 15 millimeter gets that, and then it is 21 millimeter to get these guys out. So once you release um, the 15 in the middle and then these 21s, the four of them, uh, you should have the ability for the transmission to come down and then we'll probably have to undo the exhaust which was be a 15 millimeter to undo the I pipe here uh, just getting it to release I don't think the trans will drop far enough down without releasing the exhaust now that the trans cross member is completely out um, you have a couple different options here you can take the exhaust loose like I said here at the Y pipe which I think I'm gonna do there and I probably am going to take it loose up top by the manifolds. Now, I did go ahead and take the oxygen sensor out on the passenger side, or sorry, on the driver's side here, 
So you're probably going to want to take a 7 8 wrench and grab that oxygen sensor and the other one up top before you go ahead and loosen this up. But I'm going to go ahead and get the exhaust unbolted. That way this transmission will come down like it's supposed to. Now that we have the exhaust out of the way, you can see the transmission came down quite a bit. So what I did, I went ahead and pulled these guys out. And you guys, I told you before, they are glued in, so it is a pain. Somebody told me that in the last video where I took these out because I thought they were really incredibly hard to get out. But if you heat them up a little bit with a heat gun, um, they come right out. So I've got those unplugged, but we need to un... Basically, there's a 10 millimeter up above that holds a bracket. I want to see if I can readjust my light here so you guys can see it. Up there, the fuel lines are held on to the transmission with a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to get that loose. And then on the other side, we need to unplug the actual main harness, which is up above here, that guy right there. And you just pinch that and lift it up and that will unplug. And then the next thing, I'm sorry if I'm banging the camera on a bunch of stuff, but right up here, there's a ball and socket for the shifter. We're going to go ahead and take that loose. If you put a flathead screwdriver in here, you can pop that off. And then there is a little bitty clip. Hopefully you guys can see that clip in the front side here. If you pull that clip out, then you're able to thread this guy out of place. And then we should be able to um, start attacking maybe some of the bolts that hold the uh, trans cross member or the uh, transmission dipstick tube in and then some of the trans bolts. So at this point, I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and take the starter out. So there's a couple things you need to take out here on the starter. It's, it's a little bit different than an LS. The starter is pretty close to the same, but I'm going to take the low oil. Basically, it's a sensor that tells you if your oil is low. I'm going to take it out. You just use a flathead screwdriver. If this is faced the other way, sometimes a pick helps. You just pull that clip loose, and it'll come right out. And then 13 millimeter is what it takes to take these out. Now, um, there should be, I can't really see it from right here. Yeah, 10 millimeter. Of course, my light rolled over a 10 millimeter right here to get this plate, this closeout plate off. But on this thing, you actually have to take one of the transmission bolts out in order to get that plate completely out of the way. So it's a little bit different from an LS. Um, I'm going to take the 13s out, get the starter out, and then it should be a 13 millimeter for the actual power wire on the starter and then an eight millimeter for the trigger wire. And then once we get that out, we may be able to sneak it out without taking this out first. If not, uh, then I'll take that 10, and I believe this is a 15 out uh, in order to get the starter out of the way. But this is why I undid the battery, because right at this point, you have, um, you're have you messing with power, and so you could ground out, and it would spark and blow a fuse or shock you or whatever, but just make sure your battery's unplugged at this point. So as you can see, we got the starter out at this point, and uh, everything was the same. So 13 millimeter to get the power wire off and eight to get the trigger. So it's similar to an LS motor. But now we need to spin this thing around and get to these converter bolts. Now, why GM and their wisdom decided to put a actual hex head on these and not the LS, I don't know. But that is awesome because I have stripped the center of these out I don't know how many times and that's why I've had to pull out with the transmission. So the fact that this is um, a hex head is so incredibly awesome. But what we need to do is you can reach over here on your transmission and put it in neutral and then it's a 16 millimeter on the 4.3 to spin it around to get it where you need it. And then we're going to zap out all three of these converter bolts. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to put it in neutral, spin it to where you can get to one. Um, put it back in park and then you can knock out that bolt and put it back in neutral, spin it around and so on and so forth until all three are out. Now, once all three are out, then we're going to move on to two more things that are held onto the transmission and we can get to the actual bolts that hold the transmission to the block. So I have all three of the converter bolts out and uh, actually went really well because we were able to use that hex head and it was a 15 millimeter. 15 was kind of loose, but I couldn't find anything that fit any more, basically any more snug. A 14 was too small and uh, 9 16 was too small. And so I just, I ended up using a 15 even though it was loose. But now we're on to two more things before we could take transmission bolts out. Now the transmission bolts themselves are 15 millimeter, but you can see right there um, up about in the middle of your screen here 
there is a 13 millimeter that holds the trans tube, the dipstick tube in place. So we need to take that 13 off. And there's also a 13 on the other side here. And I'm gonna try to, it's gonna be noisy. Let's see if I can show you guys the one on the other side. Right up there at the top, and you, I don't even know that you can see it, but where all the fuel lines run in, there's a 13 up there as well. So you're gonna need a pretty long extension and probably a swivel to get to those. But I'm gonna go ahead and take those out of the way and then the wiring harness will be loose, the trans dipstick tube will be loose, and the only thing we'll have left to do is pull the actual uh, transmission lines out and we'll, I'll show you what you need to do when we get to that point. So I got all of the ones that are threaded on uh, so the one that held the dipstick tube and the one on the other side, but there was one more that held the vent tube for the transmission. So it was right above this one that held the actual trans tube and or the dipstick tube in place for the transmission. I went ahead and took out some of the bolts. So the only ones I have left are the 15 millimeters like this guy here. And then I always keep two on the bottom for last. Sorry, my light is not up there. Let's see if I can get it down here. So I've got that 15 and then these two on the bottom and we are ready to undo the transmission line. So what these are guys is if you slide those little black collars back and I'm going to see if I can find a spot to hang this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's little black pieces of just keepers. They're actually just, I don't even know what they're for, to be honest with you, to keep those from coming out. But once you get those out of the way, you can take a pick and there is a piece of wire. It's a clip that just you push out. So it's similar to like a window crank on a manual window. But once you get those out of place, then you should be able to just pull those lines straight out. And I always leave that for last because you're going to get doused in transmission fluid if you don't. So... I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt out, leave these bottom two, and then take the transmission lines. And once you release those clips, they'll literally just pull straight out. And we will be ready to drop this thing down. I'm going to put a jack underneath the pan and uh, we'll gradually wiggle it back and forth. Sometimes you have to pry against the bell housing. Um, a good spot to do that is where the starter was at. And you don't want to overdo it. Just pry a little bit at a time. It'll start to separate and then you can kind of pull it back and have somebody help you with a jack drop it down. So at this point, as you can see, the transmission is out. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do, obviously, if you're doing this on the ground, guys, um, generally right in the middle of that pan is the best balance point. So if you can have somebody, I actually did it by myself, which is surprising that it didn't roll off, but if you can gradually let it down, as you let it down, it does separate pretty well. I didn't have to even pry on this one. So uh, once I took the trans lines out and then those two other bolts, um, it was pretty loose. And so as I started to drop it, I just held on the tail shaft back here with one hand as I was dropping the jack with the other and was able to get it down. But now, um, because we're doing it on the ground, you're probably going to have to push it off on like a piece of cardboard in order to get it out from under the truck, uh, which is what I'm going to do. And then um, other than that, I think everything is loose for the most part. Um, the, you could see the dipstick tube over there. Um, I had already pushed it out, but the actual vent tube, it looks like it's grabbing over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and relieve pressure on it. It's just, it's hooked up top. It's not, um, it's not actually bolted to anything. But other than that, I'm gonna slide this thing out from under the truck. So at this point, I do have the transmission out and it is the next day. Guys, by the time I got this thing out, I was tired, it was hot in here. And uh, I just took my time. I didn't rush things. And in the video, it may look a little more simple, but it's not too bad. It's something that you can do in a garage or out in your driveway. This thing is gross though. You can see all the, I actually had, I didn't know this, but it's got a little bit of an oil leak on the pan, but it also has the power steering is leaking. So I'm pretty sure a majority of this is power steering fluid that's blown back and uh, just got on everything. So it is a nasty mess, but my dad, is going to be putting this in his truck, so I'm sure he'll clean it up. He's also going to be putting the motor in his truck, and we will have a video on that way down the road when we do that. But I wanted to break this up into uh, a couple different videos, so it's really easy for somebody who wants to do maybe a 4.3 to a V8 conversion. Now this will work. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you will work with a 4.3 to 5.3 or 4.3 to 4.8 or 4.3 to 6.0 or 6.2 or whatever you're going to be doing. 
I'm gonna show you guys a step-by-step -step process of that. So in the next video, you guys are gonna see me pull the motor out of this thing. And uh, I will tell you that we're gonna have a bunch of content on this um, all together because this is the main thing that I wanna get accomplished. I've been wanting to get this finished so I can move on to other stuff. I know you guys have been wanting to see the Trans Am. I know you're wanting to see more Tahoe stuff and maybe I'll sprinkle some stuff in between there. But for the most part, you're gonna see a lot of green Sierra content, that is for sure. But if you guys did like this video, if it was informative, please like always smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, you gotta go down and hit that subscribe button because we have a ton of content on this and everything else. While you're down there subscribing, make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And well, stay tuned to see this thing come together.